What up, guys? Welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. Glad to have you. I hope your work week is off to a great start. I know mine is. Hope the weather where you're at is lovely as well. Can't really complain. The workers at Starbase Texas might, but we'll get to that. So for my videos, I don't like to get too nitty gritty with the details. I like to keep things short and to the point by you know providing a general broader overview of all the major events going on. But because we have some of these hindrances and delays from the weather going on, I thought I'd take this opportunity to make sure we're all on the same page and we all know what exactly is happening in Starbase down there in Boca Chica, Texas with you know the locations and uh, of all the uh, starships and boosters and, and what their status is. So since our last video on Friday afternoon, Starship 20 was lifted off of suborbital pad B and placed on a transport stand. It was then moved a short distance next to the orbital launch tower. Again, the weather was kind of being a pain in the B. High winds were kind of slowing things down. I mean, it looks like we may see some stacking pretty soon, maybe even before Booster 4 lights up. I mean, we just don't know. It would be smart for SpaceX to take the initiative and start practicing stacking Ship 20 on Booster 4, you know, using all these new features of their new launch tower, perhaps in preparation for future ships down the road that are currently being built, which we'll get to. After all, the company does have some time between now and the end of February when the FAA is going to make their decision on the EA. And you know, it's kind of funny that, you know, winds were kind of interrupting this whole moving of SN20 process uh, because cranes just can't handle those kind of winds, but the chopsticks can, but yet they still need the crane to move it, move the ship closer to the, to the tower. So nothing's perfect, I guess. Road closures for Highway 4 down there were canceled for today and yesterday. However, tomorrow's through Friday's still remain in effect at this time. Again, not sure exactly what we can expect to see. All right, so we'll check out some of Lab Padre's cams taken of the construction yard. These were captured today using their live feed. You can definitely see uh, the progress of the wide bay there. Thing is sprouting faster than the wife's tomato garden. You can see Ship 21's main body right here outside the mid bay. It's nose cone over here. We had expected it to be mated by now, but you know, who knows what's going to happen to it. SpaceX, that's who. You can kind of make out Booster 7 here in the high bay. Lab Padre streams saying that its methane tank has been completed. 22's thrust dome has been moved into the mid bay. Parts for Booster 8 have also been spotted lying around the construction yard. Same with Starship 24, and it's that ship with Booster 7 that's going to be the next version or iteration of the Starship vehicles with all the new upgrades, like more engines and stuff. Zooming out a bit here with the different Lab Padre cam, you can see a broader picture of the Boca Chica site. Poor Booster 5 sitting there next to SN15 and 16 looking all depressed. Never got its day. But who knows, maybe it will. You gotta stay positive, Booster 5. If you wanna know more about the upgrades coming for future Starships and Boosters, just check out one of my recent videos. We cover it all. And we also talk about the future cargo bay door that's inevitably coming for one of these future variants because SpaceX has recently told the FCC that they're planning on launching Starlink on top of Starship or in Starship to orbit. You know, at March is what they're aiming for. Is that really gonna happen? In fact, Elon just twatted this morning that there's still much internal debate going on as to how they're going to implement version two of the Starlink satellites with Starship. As you can imagine, filling up these Starship nose cones with literally hundreds of satellites, it's probably more complicated than you think. Meanwhile, in McGregor, Texas, which is where SpaceX tests all their rocket engines, the Merlins and the Raptors and the Raptor 2s, local Reagan Beck has said that she's been hearing quite a bit of rumbling lately with these Raptor 2 engine tests. It's also the place where SpaceX wants to start building their Raptor 2 engines, you know, instead of transporting them down from Hawthorne, California. And the building where they're going to do that has come a long way. It looks like it's complete from the outside. They do have five Raptor test stands down there. So here in the near future, we could be seeing them taken off those stands, which they currently are operating on, and shipped down to Starbase, Texas, and implemented with some future Starship and booster vehicles. They're going to need them because future variants are going to have a lot more engines, like 33 for the booster and nine now for, Star for Starship. In other news, on Saturday, January 23rd at 10.40 a.m., the Dragon capsule for CRS-24, the resupply mission of the space station that launched a while back, undocked and made its way back to Earth, where it deployed... Shoots the bra! <sighs> where it splashed down off the coast of Florida at 4.05 p.m. on January 24th, carrying over 4,900 pounds of science experiments and station hardware for analysis and inspection. This, of course, was one of those newer version 2 cargo Dragon capsules, but it was its second trip to orbit. We do have an upcoming mission for this Thursday. Falcon 9 will launch Cosmos SkyMed second generation FM2 to orbit for Italy from Slick 40 in Florida, Slick 40 in Florida at 6.11 p.m. Eastern time. And we will be live streaming that. So feel free to join me if you need a viewing buddy. Buddy! 
But now it's time for today's honorable mention. I've had the privilege of interviewing Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck like a year or two ago for a parachute documentary I was doing. The reason I included them is because they had just announced that they were going to start attempting to recover their first stage of their Electron rocket. Of course, not using propulsive landings like SpaceX's Falcon 9 or Starship does because it's a smaller rocket, but using shoots bra. And uh, the company just released on their twatter that they have been undergoing um, high altitude drop tests of their first stage and catching them using a skyhook with a helicopter. Always love it when they share this footage. It's pretty fascinating. Now, this whole recovery process is a step-by-step -step process. And the last time they included it in one of their launches was for a Black Sky satellite launch in November. And, you know, they just scooped it out of the drink after it splashed down. But all that's been completed. So the next step is to actually use the helicopter and, and grab it out of the air. And instead of utilizing some sort of recovery ship to, you know, put the booster on and bring it back to the coast, they're just going to give the helicopter more fuel so it can make its own way back. They plan on making this attempt sometime in the first half of this year. So get pumped. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching the show. For those of you supporting the channel, thanks for watching my six. Do have a nominal work week. And until Thursday's launch, Godspeed.